the supply curve, deriving and understanding the supply curve. A market consists of buyers and sellers, and we want to look at the selling side of the market to derive and understand the supply curve. Our application is Linstead Market, where sellers and buyers come together every Saturday to exchange produce. The higher the price, the greater the quantity that will be offered for sale. We start with this supposition that is based on the principle that people respond to incentives. And so with a higher price, more sellers are going to be incentivized to bring a greater volume of carrots to market to sell. Based on that supposition, we went around and interviewed all of the sellers who sell in, in Linstead Market and asked them to give us an idea of how much carrots they would be bringing to market at various prices. And when we aggregated all of those, then we were able to construct the table that you see. At a price of $750 a pound, the sellers were willing to sell 70 pounds of carrot a week. At a price of $730 a pound, they were only willing to bring 65 pounds of carrots and so on. Notice that there is a positive relationship between price and quantities being supplied to reflect that a higher price incentivizes a greater supply of carrots, calls for a greater supply of carrots. Let us plot these points on a graph with price on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. If we plot each of those points and connect them, we get the supply curve. Supply curve shows the relationship between price and quantities supplied. The table shows the same information that is on the graph. The same pairs show up on both the table and the graph. We focus on the relationship between price and quantity supplied because in a market, price plays a key role. But the price of a product is not the only factor that is going to influence supply. Some of the other factors that can influence the supply of a good or service that is available for sale is the state of technology. In the case of carrots, improved irrigation, a better technology for providing water for the crops is going to lead to a higher yield and therefore more carrots being supplied at every price. State of nature also affects supply. How much rainfall has there been? And rainfall, to use that example, doesn't affect the supply of only agricultural products. There are many other goods and services that are affected by, by there being a lot or, or, or little rain. Rainfall, for example, affects the ability of factory workers to get to work. If the rain is sufficiently you know, heavy and the roads flood and the traffic moves more slowly, then fewer workers get to work for that shift and a smaller quantity of whatever it is is going to be produced. The prices of other commodities. For example, the prices of potatoes is going to affect the willingness of farmers to plant carrots. If potato prices go up, they are going to shift their fields, their acreage from carrots into now higher priced potatoes and the supply of carrots is going to fall. Institutions, economic institutions can affect supply. Institutions here refers to what are the rules and behaviors that generally govern economic activity. So for example, to give you one glaring example, if the good or service is legal or illegal, that's an institution, that affects the willingness of people to supply it. So illegal drugs, for example, the supply of that is restricted by the fact 
that it is against the law to to produce them and to distribute them. So any of these factors can affect supply in addition to the price. So when we went around and collected the data to be able to derive this supply schedule and the supply curve, it was contingent on these other factors, on the state of institutions and current technology and the prices of uh, other goods and services, and on you know, the, the expected state of nature, and other factors as well. If one of those factors were to change, If, if a product that is deemed illegal becomes legalized, then that destroys the relationship we had previously constructed and therefore invalidates the supply curve and that requires new data. It means that perhaps if a, a competing use for the land becomes legalized, let us say marijuana growing becomes legalized, then carrot farmers are going to want to, some of them anyway, shift out of farming carrots to, to growing gandra. And therefore the supply of carrots is going to fall. And if the supply of carrots falls at every possible old price, then when we construct a new supply curve, all of those points and the line will be to the left of the old supply curve. So at a price of $710 a pound, instead of 60 pounds of carrots being supplied, now only 50 pounds will be, will be supplied. Our shorthand is to say the supply curve of carrots shifts to the left. So we conclude that the slope of the supply curve reflects how quantity supplied changes in response to a change in price.